Hey guys and welcome back to another Imagine Forward tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to create an AI chase or just use AI pawn sensing in order for it to work for multiple players and multiple characters. So I have done a video previously on an AI chase, however that was specific for one player so that was mainly made for a single player game, but people have asked how to make it for multiplayer as well so the AI can chase more than just one player. Obviously it will only chase the one it is targeting, but if it sees another player it will then go and target them as well. It's quite a simple solution but not many people know it, so I'm going to go over it today as well. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you'll see that the AI is over there chasing me now, or actually it's chasing one of those as it's seen them. So I believe it's this player. If I were to move over, it's chasing this player. If I try and get out of sight, you'll see it's now going to go into a random room, or it's actually now chasing this player as it is now seeing this one. If I try and hide from this one again, it's now going to go over there, where it's chasing me once again. So let's hide from it and see where it goes. It's going to go chase the other player. So you'll see as it sees different players, it's going to chase them. Obviously it's not a great example right now because I'm the only person playing, I'm controlling all these three different characters. However, you get the point of when it sees a different player, it will go and chase them instead of just chasing one single player. So this is what we're going to create today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. But before we get into the rest of this video, I do want to just quickly mention something which a friend of mine has asked me to put onto a video, which is their video of them playing a card game which they are currently working on, which is a game based on Battle Jam Ponies, which is inspired by Pokemon. So I'll leave a link to his video in the description down below where he properly goes over it. And this is not a paid promotion at all, just want to make that clear. This is just simply because he's a friend, he's asked me, so I'm putting it on here. Again, not paid promotion, but it's linked in the description down below. So let's get on with the video. So all we're going to do is open up our AI. So mine is here like so. And you'll see what I've got in here already is just some random roam code, which I'm then doing off begin play, just so again I can have it random roam, just so when it's not chasing a player, it's still moving, so it's then essentially looking for a player. You don't need this for it to work, but I do also have different videos going over how to create this if you want a more in-depth video explaining it. We're then going to go over to the viewport and create our AI port and sensing. I imagine you might already have this set up, but just in case you don't, I'm going to do it now. So we're going to add a component and add pawn sensing, simply like so. And if we compile, you'll see we now have all of the parameters on screen like so. I'm just going to make some very simple adjustments in which all I'm going to do is really just change the peripheral vision so it can't see too much and maybe also decrease the sight radius ever so slightly. Compile and save that and that's pretty much all I'm going to do to change this. Because again, all I'm doing is just using the sight on this at the moment, just for a chase based on when the player sees you. And again, this is all I really want to change. You can obviously go into as much detail as you want and change other things as well, but in this video, I'm just doing sight. Next, we obviously want to chase the player when the AI sees it. So we're going to go down to events on the bottom right here and press on see pawn. So when the AI sees another pawn, i.e. another player, this event is going to fire off. I'm just going to move that up here. And you'll see this pawn here is the pawn in which it is seen, and that's the one we want to chase. So keep that in mind, this is the player. So this is the specific player we want to chase because again, we're going to have multiple. This is which one we're targeting. So what we did last time was we would have cast to our character, which would be the third person character. However, that means it is only going to work for that specific character, which is why we did it last time as well, because we did want to make sure it only worked for our player. But obviously, if you have more than one player, you want to do it for multiple. So we don't need that. I'm just showing you what we did last time. What we're going to actually do is hold down S, left click to get a sequence connecting that in there and then one is going to go into our actual code for chasing the player so then zero ai move to like so the pawn is going to be a reference to self because this pawn is the pawn in which the ai is moving so this pawn is the reference of ai which is going to be self because we want to move the ai itself the target actor is actually the pawn on on c pawn because that is the one we want to chase i.e the player and I'm just going to double click this to get some ruin nodes to keep it looking nice and organized just because I'm about to do some code off then one as well. That code is going to be to stop chasing the player because at the moment this is just going to continually always chase the player. We want to also create a system in which it can stop. So off then one I'm going to get a re-triggerable delay and the duration of this is how long you want it to be from after the AI stops seeing the player to when it stops chasing. So let's say the AI stops seeing the player and a second later, if they still haven't seen the player, that is when they'll stop chasing and start random roaming or looking again. I don't want it to be a second just because I've got a very small arena for the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm going to set it to half a second. You can obviously increase this to get it much better for you. So if you find that the AI is just randomly stopping chasing the player, you'll probably want to increase this value here. 
and I've completed this again is the code for what you want the AI to do when it stops chasing which for me is just a random roam. So that's what I'm going to do there and it's re-triggerable because what's going to happen is every time this event is fired off i.e. every time it sees the player it's going to go into this delay and because it's re-triggerable it will restart the delay back from the beginning and we'll see if it doesn't get restarted it will go all the way through and fire off the random roam. So we'll compile and save that. So this is very similar to how we did it last time for just a single player. However, this is now for any player in a level as we're just using this reference of the pawn which the AI sees. So again, this is the player the AI has seen, so it's the one we want to chase. So we'll compile, save, and this should now be the code done for us. So let's hit play and test it out. You'll see that the AI is chasing me here, and it's also now gone over to chase this one as that's the one it's seen. If I to move about, we're going to hide away and it will start chasing a different player as you'll see it's now chasing this one working perfectly like so one thing i should also mention is you're going to want to make sure you have enough mesh bounds placed in your level otherwise it won't work you can find that by going to volumes scroll down nav mesh bounds volume and just increase it to the size of the level or the area in which you want the ai to be able to move in and you'll see i have mine placed here to make sure it's working if you press p the floor should turn green where it is green the ai can move if it's red they can't move and if it's not green or red it also can't move if there's no color it probably means the navish bounds doesn't reach it and if it's red it probably means it is reaching it but it doesn't work there or it can't access it anything like that but again the green is good and press p again to disable that but like i said earlier this works perfectly so i think that'll be it for this video if we've done everything we want to do we've set it up so an ai is going to chase the player in which it sees and again this is going to work for multiplayer as well so any player in which it sees it is going to chase not just one single player which is how we set it up last time this is going to work dynamically for multiple players in the level as well let me try and find the ai around on that side so it's now chasing this player as you'll see here so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one